Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts. And in today's video, I have the first of three, three count them, videos about how to use tea bags as an art supply. Today's video is going to show how to prepare tea bags and use them with mixed media techniques. And in the second part, I'm going to show how to use the papers that you have made and altered and decorated in a variety of projects. Tomorrow's video will show how to draw and paint on tea bags. And the day after that will be how to turn your tea bag papers into little books. If you like journal arts, altered books, vintage books, paper, and ephemera, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notifications with a little bell. And you will have more of them in your life. Let's go make tea bags. Let's start with an overview of tea bags. Most of you probably have um, conventional tea bags. It might be square like this or this. Uh, it might be this kind here with a little tag. Or here's a, a round one. There are also large oversized tea bags. They're quart sized for making iced tea. I know you can get them in the States. I suspect you can get them in Australia. Let me know in the comments. Help me out here, Aussie friends, if you have oversized uh, tea bags. We don't have them here in Wales, so I can't show one on camera. But I know that in a lot of places, you can go to any supermarket or grocery store and find quart size tea bags, which will give you a nice big surface to work with. Most of these are from uh, black tea. So you're going to get that tea color. But you can also use tea bags from maybe a herbal tea, like mint. I like ginger lemon, and that's not going to pick up the tea color, so you're going to have a lighter surface to work with. You can also try berry teas. This was black currant, and um, I do not like berry tea, but the paper turned out to be this beautiful mauvey pink. So sometimes I will make a pot of berry tea, throw a ton of lime juice in there and drink it anyway. And then I have this. Let me introduce you to the close cousin of the oversized tea bag. These are paper tea filters. I drink a lot of loose tea. So I buy these, put your tea in here, then you fold it over and put it in your teapot. They come in different sizes. So you have a variety of different sizes that you can work on. If you don't have these in your neighborhood, you can find them online. Go to Etsy or eBay and put in keywords such as paper tea infusers or paper tea filters. They last a long time and I use them a lot. Most of the videos today will be using the tea bags that I have from here. I get mine from a place called Tea Cakes of Yorkshire. Now to prepare the tea bags. And there's a little more to it than you might think. If you take your tea bag out straight away when you make tea, it's gonna, and then you squeeze it out and let it dry, you're probably gonna get something similar to this, which is tea colored paper. And that's fine. That might be the style that you like. If so, carry on. I like my tea bags to have something extra. These, these marks that are similar to rust. And to get this, you need an extra step. Take your tea bags out of the tea that you've just made and then put them in a shallow bowl or dish. Here's the trick. You want to add 
a little bit of liquid, a little bit of tea back into that. There. Not much. And you want to let it evaporate. Put it in a sunny spot. Or uh, I actually put them on a radiator and leave it overnight. You probably want to leave it uh, overnight, two nights maybe, depending. But just let that liquid evaporate into the tea bags. What it does is activates the leaves and that's what stains the paper like this. If you're really impatient, you can uh, do this in the oven. What you want to do is put them in a shallow uh, pan and then turn your oven on the lowest setting it has. Uh, and even then, you want to watch it carefully, maybe even open the door a little bit, because you don't want to cook this, you want to dry it. But if you're careful, it will work. When the tea bags are very dry, you just want to empty them out, which if you're using the least the the loose tea, you just you just pour it out. Maybe make sure it's all done. Okay. If you have a conventional tea bag, you're going to want to cut the the bag to let the leaves out. You could cut along the seam or on the edge. Just depends on what you are going to make with it. I'm going to dump that out. And you can compost this. And if you compost this, this is actually a zero waste art supply. Even better. And now you can either leave it in this pillow shape which is uh, a way some people like to do if they're going to paint on the tea bag. Or you can just open it up carefully. Open along the edges. I tend to do this because I like to work on a surface that is very, very almost transparent almost like a tissue paper. Same thing here. Just tearing. And when you get to an irregular place, if it's pleated, you can either very carefully open it up, let it be asymmetrical, or you can cut it and trim it here. Play around with it, see what style works for you. The way I've blocked this video today is I'm going to show a variety of mixed media ways to alter tea bags. Then I'm going to glue those tea bags into over the text in this old book so that you can see what that looks like. It doesn't have to be text, it could be over uh, just a blank piece of sketchbook paper. It could be over sheet music, over a map. You'll find your own style. Then after I've made several pages with different altered tea bags, later in the video, I'm gonna show how you can use those to make a variety of journal and other art projects. First, let's look at just putting down the plain old tea bag. I am going to use acrylic gel medium, but you could use a PVA or a white craft glue, Mod Podge, or even a glue stick. Look how this has lots of nice rust-like mark making. That's what you get when you let the, the tea absorb into the bags. Now, I'm just 
could put that down and gently press it into place. And you can see that it has gone quite translucent. And you can see all of that fun text underneath. And you can also still see the pretty marks there. So you've got a lot of layer and texture right there. If you like, the one on the left there is pretty tidy considering. Now let's do one that's not so much. What I'm gonna do is squash it and then press it into place. And now I've got this grungy 3D kind of texture going on. So even before you decorate these, you can use them for a lot of different fun backgrounds. Now let's look at a way of decorating the tea bags with rubber stamps. If possible, use an ink pad that is permanent and water resistant. The reason is that when you activate these tea bags with some, some kind of glue, the, the moisture in the glue will activate the ink. And if it's not permanent, it might move around on you and get smudgy. Not necessarily a bad thing. It could just be a look, but if you want a nice crisp image, see if you've got uh, ink pads that are permanent. The best way to do that is actually read the box. This one is Ranger and it says permanent and waterproof. This one doesn't say on the top, but if I turn it over, it does say that it is water resistant, as does this one. I can't find out anything about this one. It's a mystery. And if you're not sure or you don't have permanent, use what you got and take a chance. They're only tea bags, okay? So I'm going to ink up a couple of these and show you what they look like on the stamp pad, on the tea bag. Well, 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 it seems that the mystery stamp pad was not all that water resistant and I don't care. One, as I said, it's kind of a look. Two, there are ways that I can use that uh, in spite of this. And again, later in the video, I will show you how we're gonna turn these into projects. But in the meantime, I just think these look so pretty and, and dramatic. You've got the text underneath, you've got the rusty look of the, the staining, and now, now you've got the ink and the designs. So you've got a lot of layer, texture, and interest to the eye going on just with this. 
Now I'm going to show some ways to add stencil work to the tea bags. The first one is going to be using, again, a stamp pad and a blending tool. If you don't have a blending tool, you can use a makeup sponge. It works just as well. I chose a tea bag that was a little bit lighter in, in shade. It doesn't have to be that way, but I think this might have been for maybe a, a lighter tea than a, a, a black tea, and so it didn't dye quite as uh, dark. I'm just going to work that ink into the tea bag. You can also stencil with paint. This is acrylic. You could also use gouache or ink, other kinds of pigment. But let's go with the acrylic. Just got a dauber here. This is not a proper dauber. It's from a kid's art set. I don't know where my proper daubers are, but this'll work. And here is how the stenciled tea bag that was done with the rubber stamp and the blending tool looks when it is glued down to some text. Here's the one with acrylic paint. And this I have not glued down because I'm going to use it in a slightly different way when we look at some projects. Did you know that you can print on tea bags? It is a pretty fiddly technique. Not going to lie, but the results are stunning. What you have to do is press your tea bag nice and flat, iron it. Then take a piece of plain copy paper and you use masking tape to carefully put down your tea bag as flat as possible on the copy paper. Then you put it in your printer tray. Mine prints from the bottom, so it goes like that, and it should go through just fine. And then you just very carefully peel it from the copy paper. And this is what's left. This is the butterflies that I'm using here are from a lot of printable vintage butterfly scans that I have on Etsy. There are several pages of butterflies, both in color and botanical black and white ones. So there's a link to that in the text below this video if you want to have a look at those. This one that I'm going to show in a moment is also from a printable scan. It is free and it is on my website. I have a link to that as well. I know I said I'm going to show the projects that you can make from your altered tea bags later in the video, but since we're with our printables right now, Let's look at how you can make them into a tag. I have an oversized tag here, and I have cut some text, just some print out of an old book. I'm gonna glue it together there, and then add my, my letters.
Now I can just take a hole punch and go through that text. If I want to add a ribbon or some twine, now I have a super charming, unusual tag to go into my art journal. These also came out really well on the old book pages. There was a little bit of tearing and I don't mind because I think this lends itself well to that peeling wallpaper look that I love so much and I'm, I'm always trying to get. And we'll make something with those a little bit later. Now that you've made a decorated a lot of tea bags, how can you use them in your work? The most common way that I use them is for making art journal pages. It could be a junk journal or any other kind of collage project that you're working on. So this is the super simple one, just with that light, nice, rusty mark making look. I could put this in my art journal and then take other elements. These are just some scraps. And turn it into a collage, a journal page. And it just really gets you off and running with a, st a strong beginning. You could do this with any of the papers. Look at that one with the messy rubber stamping. It's the same idea. It's going to give you an even different background. So you can just get started and let the pieces, let the, the background that you've made on these decorated tea bags talk to you and start to become a mixed media collage piece. Some of these pieces look really good if you fussy cut them and just use them as separate elements, focal points. This is the moth that I printed on the tea bag and then glued, glued to text. And this is uh, one of the flowers that I made from rubber stamping and an ink pad. And you could use them as you would any elements. You could make them into a the start of a journal page. You could add them to a tag. And you could make them into a card. This is a blank card that I got at a charity shop. Got a bunch of them for two pounds. But uh, you could also make your own out of cardstock or heavy paper. I put down a messy background of some watercolor. And you could add your pieces, whatever they are. Glue those down. I'm not going to make you watch me glue because you get the idea. And you could make a beautiful one of a kind card that came from you. I'm just gonna make another card or again, it could be a journal background page. Any other mixed media project that you are working on. This is the tea bag from the berry tea. I'm just going to put that down nice and messy. And then I've got this tea bag that I have stamped with another rubber stamp and ink pad.
Here's the piece that just had a simple tea bag that I squished about and, and wrinkled and crinkled for texture. I'm going to add a little bit of color using a stamp pad. And I'm just going to bounce it along the tops here. Just going to add a little bit more distress. And depth and interest. So now you could use this, make it into a card or a tag. But am I the only one who likes to alter Altoid tins? Because I think this would look terrific on top of an Altoid tin. And now you have a cool little box that you could use to store change or art supplies or give away as a little gift. I use a lot of bookmarks. I love reading and if I'm studying in a book, I sometimes have six or more bookmarks in the same book. So I'm going to take these and make them into a multi bookmark. Again, it's where I've rubber stamped on a tea bag with an ink pad, glued it to the text, and then I took a simple hole punch and made a hole and added this sorry silk. You could use any ribbon or lace that you have, any scraps, twine looks really cute. And now I'm going to tie them together up here and make a fun tassely knot. And hey presto, I have a multi bookmark for something where I'm trying to keep ideas in different places of the book. This would make a great present from you to someone that you know who loves reading. Earlier I made a tag, an oversized tag, with this tea bag where I had a, that I had printed on. Now I'm going to make another kind of tag using old cards. This is the tea bag where I used acrylic paint and stencil. I've actually cut it a little bit larger than the card. And that's because, again, I'm going to wrinkle and crinkle. So I'm just adding my adhesive here. And I'm going to put that on and squash it around until it fits the card. Just feed it in there. Or you could do it flat if you want it nice and neat and tidy and flush. But I really like this messy, shabby chic card. You could use these as tags if you wanted to put... Uh, Again, use a hole punch and add some twine or ribbon. This could be made into a tag. It could go in a pocket. Here is one where I have used those butterflies and moths that I printed. I trimmed that and put that on a card. And again, this could actually just be the tag itself, or it could be the starting point where you add other elements. And now you've got lots and lots of layer and, and fun going there. And there you go. Needless to say, all of these techniques are mix and match. 
Any of these would make good bookmarks. Any of these would make good cards. And charming tags, like, like this. In your altered books or junk journals or art journals. Any of these would make terrific backgrounds to start a journal page. So take these, run with them, play with them, and make them your own. If you have any feedback or any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I will try to answer those in the next two videos. Below this video is some text, and if you go there, you can read and find out what's coming, going on here at Book and Paper Arts. Please join me tomorrow for the second part of this project, How to Draw and Paint on Teabags. Until then, happy making.